guys, as we get to the end of the uh, Revolutionary War, and again, as a reminder, this is not really about the um, you know military battles and things like that. Uh, we are going to talk about the Battle of Yorktown only because it is the whoops, it is the last battle um, that after which the British had surrendered, uh, and so that's why the Battle of Yorktown is important. Um, the British had General Charles Cornwallis and the infamous Benedict Arnold, who is probably best known for being a, a major traitor and giving up a fort to the British. It's another story altogether about how he was jealous and how uh, he has felt that he was overlooked for promotions and things like that. So his, I guess his only solution was to betray the entire country. Um, obviously, we won the war, so uh, it didn't uh, ultimately work. So one of the criticisms and perhaps one of the reasons why the British uh, lost the Battle of Yorktown was that instead of attacking immediately, um, the combined forces, again, we're talking about Arnold and Cornwallis, uh, withdrew to Yorktown to fortify and to wait for supplies. But, as we'll know, uh, the supplies never come thanks to the French. At the same time, Washington you know, moves his troops uh, surrounding the British uh, on one end, and at the time, this is key, the French Navy intercepts the British naval vessels that were supposed to relieve Cornwallis and supply, you know, the extra troops and the extra supplies and everything. And so Cornwallis felt, hey, I just need to hold out here for a little bit, uh, and then eventually I'll get my supplies, we'll get our troops, and we'll go and we'll smash whoever, you know, is, is still remaining. But the result was, because the ships never made it, the French intercepted them, that Cornwallis was surrounded and he had nowhere to retreat. One of the people that helped quite a bit with this uh, was General Rochambeau. Um, and oftentimes it's sort of, you know, not covered as much as it should, that the French, along with the Prussians, with a P, that's Prussians, uh, really did help not only in training and helping to equip uh, the Revolutionary Army, uh, but also, in, in, in especially in this case, in actually supplying direct military intervention. And General Rochambeau is one of the better-known ones uh, who did provide the help. So we know, finally, okay, we are uh, now free. You know, we have declared independence. Um, and it is important to note that after Yorktown, the British did surrender. And the Treaty of Paris, which is... And there are many, many treaties of Paris. But this Treaty of Paris was, of course... Uh, the one that brought the Revolutionary War to an end, and some notable notable people, Brent Franklin, John Jay, etc., negotiated this pre uh, Treaty of Paris, and finally, on September 3rd, 1783, the treaty was ratified, and the USA became an independent nation. Now, whether or not that's the day that you actually consider you know, the United States, you know, was that its birthday? We often figure, you know, July 4th, 1776. Um, and this is somewhat open for debate. You know, is it the day the Declaration of Independence was adopted? Is it the day that the treaty was signed? Is it the day the Constitution was ratified? And you could make good arguments for all of them. And I guess that's still up in the air in terms of what's the actual day. Um, but for now, we have all decided that it is July 4th, which is our country's birthday. But that, of course, is open for debate. All right, we had a short one, and hope you enjoyed. See you all later.